Well, this is uh, from Soldier of Fortune, July 1995. And I think you should hear this. And there's going to be some swear words in here, so prepare yourself. If you can't stand it, well, get off of it. SWAT suited federal agents descended on a tranquil domestic setting is becoming more and more common. Must we now also expect the, the abuse of spouses and murder of defenseless baby animals along with this? This is a lamp, Lampoo Raid, the new low in BATF terror tactics. Staring through steamy windows in the shadowy dark outside of her rural home, Teresa Lampu felt inexplicably spooked. She is a petite athletic blonde, and she thought she saw a man crouch behind the shrubs outside uh, her house, peering into her hot tub room. Pulling a towel around her, she sat upright on the edge of the turning whirlpool and called out nervously to her husband. He came in and he looked around, probably just a deer. Harry reassured her, while well, game is plentiful around her north central Pennsylvania home. As it turned out, though, the Lampus were that prey that night. They realized the next morning that a man had been peeping at Terry. Uh, they remember the moment well because it was May 25th, 1994. About 15 or 20 gangbaggers, as Harry calls them, had descended on their home with weapons drawn, screaming obscenities threatening their lives. Seven hours later, the Lampoo's house looked like a gang rumble had indeed gone down. Greasy boxes of half-eaten pizza, slices, beverage can, the intruder stepped, stopped for lunch in the middle of their mayhem. Uh, and they tossed all the stuff on the floor. Disassembled tampoons lay scattered around the bathroom. Terry's lunch rage board was ransacked and dumped. Anything furniture and valuable stationery were broken. Cigarette butts had been flipped carelessly on the carpet, scorching it. Harry's vial of cancer medication, hundreds of dollars worth of stuff, were poured out and crushed underfoot. Two of Terry's beloved cats ate part of the chemical mixture, then died a yowling ag agony. As a final gesture, though, a kitten was stomped to death in the front yard as the Lampoos watched. What gang of thugs would terrorize a home? It was those foul-mouthed, trigger-happy stormtroopers of the BATF. <clears throat> Six carloads of ATF agents, accompanied by at least two members of the Inter Internal Revenue Service, two troopers from the Pennsylvania State Police, converged suddenly on the Lampoos residence. Harry was just drinking his, he was in his pajama bottoms drinking a cup of coffee and his wife was in the bathroom when the agents entered the front and the rear of their house. Invaders included uh, ATF agents Donna L. Slusher, John R. Seiler, Scott Eddy, Tim Wilson, Gregory O. Wright, John Garth, Garside, Keith Frostman, and Kathy Barton. Also present was Ned Tyler and Barry Bitbanger of IRS and local state and police officers. They didn't even know these people were police officers because there was only two people who were clearly marked uniforms. They asked for a search warrant. Let's see where I'm at. Oh, we yeah, have down below here. Sorry, people. <coughs> Right here. So shut the fuck up, you motherfucker, shouted ATF agent Siler. You want more trouble than you already got? <sighs> Harry asked repeatedly to see a search warrant. Agent said they didn't have to show him one until after they left. He asked if they were under arrest. He said no. Yet the lampoons were held all day at gunpoint in their nightclothes, much at the time at the breakfast table by a nervous young agent with a machine gun pointed at their heads. They were not allowed to call an attorney or answer the phone. They could only go to the bathroom under armed guard. At one point, uh, uh, Harry got 
an inkling what they were after. He said one agent asked him about the location of a alleged machine gun. He said he had sold a, he never sold any full automatic machine guns. He never had one. I want you to look at this lady, people. That's Terry. I don't know if I can zoom this in enough. Maybe not. But what it says. She's a raid survivor. She cradles her pet cat while she describes how two other died gruesome deaths after eating prescription medication. Invading agents had crushed underfoot in her bathroom. And how ATF agent spe special agent Donna Slusher stomped a baby kitten to death before Terry's eyes. And how a scruffy looking stranger warned her not to mess with the ATF and left a dead cat with her broken neck in her vehicle. You can see the, all that stuff. But the Lampoos display a list of items seized and property damaged when the ATF raided their residence May 1994. The gun Gestapo took more than 20,000 cash, much of an earmark for his medical expenses and a new truck. And they could only get the money back if uh, they, but they couldn't because they wanted them to recite the serial numbers. Just thinking about this. So they got uh, Harry's uh, medical records and uh, his prescription and all that good stuff. At one time, he owned a Vietnam commemorative gold inlaid semi automatic uh, Thompson, but it had been sold. <clears throat> uh, you talk about racist. You talk about racist. These are the good guys, yeah. At one point, a motion for Return of property, alleges ATF agent Seller referred to the Lampon's business as a gun show promoter. He wisecracked, we don't mind you selling guns to niggers because you only kill, because they only kill each other. Hmm. Harry had ordered a new truck and was scheduled to pick it up that morning. The paperwork and 10000 in the case were in an envelope on the dresser. It was all confiscated. A uh, bit banger. He found fifteen hundred dollars squirreled away in uh, uh, Terry's pantyhose drawer. Money she had saved for cosmetic surgery. When she complained it wasn't right for him to keep the money, he threatened her, "We'll see how cooperative you are when we throw you in a cell full of lesbians." As the agents left, the lampoos clutched each other and stared out the window, terrified. The husband said, "They they were terrified to go out to the yard because they might be shot." Then they watched in horror as Special Agent Donald, Donna J. Slusher paused in the yard by a, by a kitten which bounded, bounded playfully at her feet. She looked back at the lamp who then turned and stomped the pet severely a couple, a couple times, kick it into the nearby shrubbery. The kitten died from ruptured organs, a autopsy revealed. They took uh, Harry's uh, medical records and uh, his vital medication Documents all this stuff. Also seized were 61 firearms with approximately worth about 15,000 and more than 20,000 in cash. Agents additionally confiscated records for the Borderline Gun Collectors Association, the largest gun show promoter business in the northeastern United States. Without this paperwork, he couldn't work. And I also had the addresses and names of 70,000 past and present members from all 50 states and several foreign. Uh, mm. Harry Lamp Pooh has to post his pop because of repeated in intrusions since the ATF raided his home a year ago. Sick with cancer and disgusted with the government, he said he won't give up his fight for justice. The ATF hopes all uh, the ho ATF hopes he'll die before he gets his day in court. Mm. <clears throat> the, the ATF's new Virginia uh, Firearms Tracking Center in West Virginia is a de facto gun registration. 
No one outside the ATF really knows what's going on inside the gun registration de facto. It, it violates the privacy of law-abiding citizens. The names of those people, they've done nothing except comply with the law. This type of activity, in general, looks like the ones from the Lampoons, the Katona, Lawmaster, and all scores of others, the long-standing criticism that the ATF is institutionally biased against private gun ownership to the uh, yeah, they often ignore real criminals and try to turn law-abiding gun owners and criminals into criminal statistics. Citizens are helpless. It's going to take strong oversight and massive changes in the ATF. Oh, Lord. See, that's the thing. The ATF only goes after soft targets. They're not going after the bad guy. It's part of their M.O. It's the same old thing. Yeah, a bunch of those uh, people, they tried to intimidate him those, uh, that were on the, the jury. They tried to coax him on what the hell to say, and he said, huh, I'm not going to tell these damn ATF agents anything. I'll only tell the grand jury. Even even she thought the worst was over, uh, they still continued to live in fear of the terror tactics still uh, wel welded against them. I'm not sure who the perpetrators are, but they're, they're pretty pretty good idea. Much of the harassment has been by thumb. One caller told Terry Lampall that uh, she had really nice pantyhose, but she didn't have any tits. Then she was called up after the Gordon Liddy show and said, don't fuck with the feds. You people have to learn to button your lips or else you're dead. The telephone threats are easy to, for, to cope with compared to uh, knowing that Terry Lampaw has been stalked and harassed by people. And she's certainly, uh, they're either federal agents or they're informants. She found one man in her yard drumming through her sports car. She approached him with a handgun and she followed him down the street. Uh, and he parked next to a Ford Bronco with U.S. government plates and the two drove off together. The most terrifying incident, though, happened the 11th of October, 1994, almost five months after the raid. Terry was running eight errands, and she returned to her van. She noticed a scruffy-looking man who appeared to be drunk. She drove on to the drugstore in the hospital to get cancer medication for Harry. When she came out, she saw the same seedy-looking guy leaning against a wall smoking a cigarette. She opened the door of her car to get in, and the man suddenly appeared at her elbow. Don't fuck with the bureau, he softly said in her ear as he whirled around and took off. Check out what's in your van. She jumped inside, slammed it and locked the door and began to scream and tre tremble with rage. Then only then, after she got herself settled down, she just she said, well, it's just another cheap case of intimidation. She could take it. She couldn't wait to get home to tell her to Harry. He was just about there bumping up the rutted dirt road when she wheeled into the driveway, her grocery bag overturned, tumbling limply out on the floor next to her bucket seat with a dead black cat with a broken neck. Now this has been going on. Now let's see, this was 94. We had the Randy Weaver thing in 92 and 93. We had Waco. People don't understand. The founders of this country wanted an armed citizen, see, so that the people could resist government tyranny should it arise. This is a fundamental and indeed vital freedom which must be preserved in our society regardless of whether or not the individuals or groups, such as the branch Davidians, are guilty or breaking the law. To me, the spectacle and siege and destruction of the branch Davidian was a frightening display of unbridled and unjustified government power. Let Fuzzy in inject something else here. Uh, most of you people know that most of the people that are in law enforcement today are ex-military. Just because you get out of the military does not absolve you of your oath of office to protect and defend the United Con Excuse me. There are a lot of these people in this room that are, are in the military that are ex-military or ex-military ex or in law enforcement. 
And just because you got out of the military does not absolve you from any oath that you took to defend the United States Constitution. And if you feel any, any other way, you're wrong. You will come to a point where you have to choose. Either protect and defend the Constitution, or you protect the politicians in power. There's no such thing as blindly following orders. That was proven at Nuremberg. Remember the Nazi war trials? You've got to follow the Constitution or you are in jeopardy. Well, about all I can say, this was written by James L. Pat. Get, get the Soldier of Fortune. July of 1995. This needed to be said. This needed. I should have got this out a long time ago. I had passed out copies of it. Oh, thousands of them. Thousands. But this could have been you. This could have been your wife. They're foul mouth and they don't care. They think because they work for the United States government that they are beyond what well, they think they're untouchable. It's just what they think. And you can't be that way. Remember, no one is above the law. Pelosi said that. Thanks for watching, guys. I wanted you to see this so you under know, you know and you understand what the ATF does is what a lot of the other uh, agencies do. They try to justify their job. Thanks for watching.